In his book, As a Man Thinketh, James Allen composed a series of short, pointed essays talking about the power of thinking positively and its effects on character and circumstance and health. He uses a beautiful example of likening the human mind to that of a garden, which based on the actions taken by the gardener will either produce lush, green, fruit-bearing plants or due to neglect and bad seed planting will produce nothing but weeds. Today, I wanna to share with you five of my favorite quotes from As A Man Thinketh and talk about how you can take ownership of your garden so that you can take ownership of your mind and so that you can live a better life. What's going on everybody? Matt Hogan here from Move Me Quotes and thanks for tuning in. Before we get into the quotes, uh, I wanna let you know that I've actually listed all of them in the description below with timestamps so you can jump around and watch as you so please. Uh, I also wanted to remind you guys that if you enjoyed the video, we would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up button and definitely subscribe and hit that bell so you can get notified of when our next video comes out. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Quote number one, a man's mind may be likened to a garden which may be intelligently cultivated or allowed to run wild, but whether cultivated or neglected, it must and will bring forth. If no useful seeds are put into it, then an abundance of useless weed seeds will fall therein and will continue to produce their kind. One of my initial goals when starting Move Me Quotes was to create a platform that would allow people to take more empowering, loving, thoughtful actions on a more regular basis so that they can keep moving forward the only direction in their lives. In order to do that, I've been curating, organizing, and sharing quotes, picture quotes, stories, personal insight, and more since 2010. And while my original intention was to inspire as many other people as possible by planting those good seeds and putting them out into the world, what I slowly came to realize is the person that I was influenced the most was me. I was the one that was doing all the research and doing all the insight and diving deep and organizing and sharing. And all those seeds that I was putting out into the world were also being put into my mind. And because I was doing it on such a consistent basis, it was coming back to me tenfold. And it was coming back to me more so than it did to any one individual person I was putting it out to. So when I think back on that journey, it's interesting to note that the seeds that you plant are the seeds that are gonna grow. And the more I was trying to give out good positive seeds, the more they got planted in my own head and the more they grew for me. Quote number two, as the physically weak man can make himself strong by careful and patient training, so the man of weak thoughts can make them strong by exercising in right thinking. With each quote I posted, each picture quote that I shared, each short story that I read, I was slowly cultivating and uh, watering the seeds in my mind that would eventually lead me to take the more positive actions that have led me to become the person that I am today. It didn't happen overnight though. It happened through constant and intentional delivery of powerful thoughts and insights over the course of many years. The garden of the mind needs tending to just like the body does. You can't change your body overnight, but you can definitely change the direction in which you're heading. And so if we can change the direction in which we're heading and we can stay consistent with our actions over the course of an extended period of time, then that's where we're gonna see the real powerful results, not just for our body, but for the garden of our mind as well. And quote number three, to live continually in thoughts of ill will, cynicism, suspicion, and envy is to be confined in a self-made prison hole. But to think well of all, to be cheerful with all, to patiently learn to find the good in all, such unselfish thoughts are the very portals of heaven. And to dwell day by day in thoughts of peace towards every creature will bring abounding peace to their possessor. Wherever you go, there you are. You can travel to the most remote and beautiful location on the face of the planet, but it doesn't matter where you travel to, the one thing that you're always gonna be bringing with you is your mind, your thoughts. You can literally think yourself into a self-made prison hole or into a peaceful, free reality. While environment certainly has an influence on how you think and how you feel, it's not the end-all be-all. The end-all be-all are the power of your thoughts. Because wherever you travel in the world, wherever you decide you wanna go, the mind is always gonna be there with you. And if your mind is always seeing the bad or feeling bad, then the environment is gonna have little effect 
on your ability to overcome that. You have to start from the inside and work your way out. Once the inside is aligned and once the inside feels refreshed and clean and you've cultivated and tended to the, the mind, then everything in reality, even in the most desolate location, can start becoming more beautiful, more peaceful. And that's the power of thinking positively. That's the power of tending to uh, the thoughts of your mind. Which leads us to quote number four. Good thoughts and actions can never produce bad results. Bad thoughts and actions can never produce good results. This is but saying that nothing can come from corn but corn, nothing from nettles but nettles. Men understand this law in the natural world and work with it, but few understand it in the mental and moral world, though its operation there is just as simple and undeviating, and they therefore do not cooperate with it. As a martial arts instructor, I speak to my students about this concept all the time. I encourage them to keep a good thought process going regardless of circumstances or outcomes. For example, if they go into a competition, a tournament, and they go into the tournament with the expectation of winning and they lose. Now, in that moment of losing, by definition of not getting a first place, there are a couple things that can happen, right? Either A, they can blame the judges, blame the other competitors, they can talk about how unfair everything was, they can throw a temper tantrum and just get real frustrated and upset, and if that's the case, then they definitely would have been considered a loser, right? Because nothing came from it except negative experiences. However, should they not have gotten a first place trophy, and maybe they got second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, but they left with a different mindset, asking themselves, what can I learn from this? And they actually went up to the judges and said, hey, you know, what could I have done better next time? What can I do next time to improve? And then planning a new training regime, maybe saying, okay, I know that I gotta work on X, Y, and Z, so now when I go in to the school, I'm gonna focus on these things so that next time I go to the tournament, I'm gonna do better. And then they can look at it as an opportunity to improve and grow, and then even if they got last place, they would have left a winner. So this reinforces that concept that good things come from good thoughts. Good things don't necessarily come from bad thoughts, right? You gotta make sure you're maintaining that positive outlook because that's gonna lead to more positive actions, and when those go out into the world, you're, you're gonna get much better results. And quote number five, only the wise man, only he whose thoughts are controlled and purified, makes the winds and the storms of the soul obey him. It doesn't matter how clean you have your garden at any one particular point in time, there are weeds that are always gonna be coming back. Just like it doesn't matter how strong you have your mindset at one particular point in time, there are gonna be bad thoughts that come back. We are emotional creatures, and as such, there are gonna be times when the storm of our soul rages. We need to learn not how to eliminate it, because it's always gonna be coming back. We have to learn how to be more mindful of it, recognize it when it's there. In the moment, think about what actions we can take to get us back on track to stay the course of the storm, and then, we have to focus on what systems we can put in place that'll help us minimize the amount of effort it takes to get back on track. If we're going back to square one every time we get into an emotional state, it's gonna be hard to stay the course. But if we have systems in place so that when we recognize that a storm's coming, we can change some of the actions that we take to get ourselves back in alignment, then it's gonna make it a much easier process for us to stay the course. And the bottom line for this video and the most powerful takeaway that you can leave with is the idea that if you do learn how to maintain control of your mind and how you can stay focused on moving forward even through hard times because you know that it's the right direction, because you have that positive mind frame set and because you know where you wanna head and you have the systems in place to get there, then the world almost becomes a heaven that you're just immersed in at all times. It doesn't matter where you are, there you are. There your mind is, there your thoughts are. And with the right thoughts, there the world is. You know, there is all the beauty that lies right in front of you. You don't have to be in the most beautiful remote destinations to absorb it, to feel alive, to feel the beauty. You just have to be in the right frame of mind. So bottom line takeaway is focus on this and everything else around you will start changing. I hope you enjoyed this video today. Let us know in the comment section below which quote was your favorite. 
And let us know if you have any other favorite quotes that have to do with taking control of your mind. We'd love to hear them and add to our collection. And we look forward to seeing you guys again next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care.